chapter number four by the great, great apostle John, one of the greatest apostles, one of the inner circle of three. And here in John chapter four, the Lord made a statement here uh, beginning with verse 31 and I want to use that tonight. It's that time of year and every year when it gets this time of year, I think along these lines and so I'd like to say a few things about it tonight. If you'll stay with me and follow along with me here. John chapter 4 and verse 31. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? And Jesus wasn't talking about food you put in your mouth. Saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. I want to preach tonight on the subject, harvest time. Summer is over, y'all. You could feel it today, couldn't you? Today, as this time of year, we change from summer, really, into fall. I, I told you before, I watch every year as the guys down the road from where I live plant their gardens. I see them out there in the spring when it's cold, and they're plowing up, planting seeds, putting, out, putting onions in the ground, planting corn, putting up them little, them little things that holds your tomato plants straight. And I watch them every year, and I thought, well... It's spring. And then I watch during the summer as they come in full. And they're out there cutting the weeds, and cutting the grass around it, keeping the grass cut down. Grass growing so fast you can't hardly stand it. And big, ripe, juicy tomatoes uh, and big corn comes out there. And then it begins to go down. The grass turns a little brown. Then we wake up one morning. It's like this. It's fall. I read or I heard that one of the reasons that Halloween, the 31st of October, is, is one of the reasons they chose that day for the devil is that they believed that the 31st of October was a, uh, it was a change or there was, summer was going out, winter was coming in, and that day in between right there, it was easier to get in touch with evil spirits and to conjure spirits. Whether that's true or not, I, I doubt, but that's one of the things they believe. They believe it's like, we're going from one season to another. But any way you look at it, it's harvest time. Sowing and reaping is a great natural and spiritual truth. It's true in the natural world, spiritual world. Uh, the Bible teaches us work for the night is coming. The Bible teaches us do it now while it's daylight. Uh, uh, the old people said make hay while the sun shines. The old people said uh, uh, you better get up and, and work while it's day because night comes when no man can work. Just three or four little quick things about this this evening. And I want to say, first of all tonight, the harvest tonight is ripe for the church. For the church, the door is still open, but we don't know for how long. It will one day close. This door's been open for a little around 2,000 years. A lot of debate among when the church actually started. Most Bible teachers would say on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, those that study a little more would say possibly when the Lord breathed on those disciples, even before he died, he said, breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And the church in its infancy actually began then and then the body there on the day of Pentecost. Uh, either way, uh, the, the day of Pentecost on began what we call the church age. And during the book of Acts, the reason you see things changing so much is because at first, even when Jesus was here, uh, his ministry was to the Jew, to the Jew, to the Jew. Gentile get in every now and then, to the Jew, to the Jew. Gentile get in every now and then, get a little dispensation of grace and help. Then, when the Jews rejected the gospel and they said no, and when they didn't want none of it, uh, Paul said, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. 
And right then, in the book of Acts, the ministry shifted from Jew to Gentile, and then it was just Gentile, 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 and a Jew every now and then. Gentile, 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 and a Jew every now and then. That's why, for the most part, tonight, the Jews' eyes are blinded. We are living in the church age. We are living in the day age of grace, the dispensation of grace. Any preacher who's not a dispensationalist has no idea in this world what he's talking about. There are definite dispensations in the Bible. We are not hyper-dispensationalists, which means you don't chop up the Bible so much to where all you got left the Pauline epistles. We don't do that. But we are dispensationalists in that God deals with different people different times in history. And he does. I mean, you can't deny that. Anytime the Lord wants to, he can step across the dispensational line and do anything in any dispensation. That's a moderate dispensationalism, which we, we, we believe here, that's what the Bible tells teaches. But any way you look at it, there's never been a time like now for the church to rise up and be the church. There's never been a time like now when us to hold up the banner and say, bless the Lord, Jesus is my Savior, heaven is my home, the Holy Spirit's my comforter, God's my Father, the Bible's my book, the Holy Ghost is my guide, and we'd love for you to come along and be a part of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, buddy, we're, we're living in a time. I'm telling you, you, we are living in a time, Lord have mercy. Uh, we are living in a terrible time when people are just so concerned about everything in the world uh, besides besides church and serving God. You know, you know why we're meeting at Walmart tomorrow night uh, to give out tracts? Just because, you know what? We know our time is short and it's limited and that we're out doing something, out doing something for the Lord. The other night, uh, I went to... Uh, Gage, uh, Corey been asking me, come to Gage's ball game. Come to Gage's ball game. You know, he's playing, playing little, he used to just be little league in high school. Now they got 5,000 teams, 365 days a year to keep you out of church. And, uh, and, and she said, come to his game, come to his game, come to his game. And I said, I, I've not been to one game. And I said, okay, I'll come. So we went, I believe it was uh, Tuesday night, and uh, I was sitting there thinking, and the longer I sat there, the matter I got. I was sitting there. These stands was full over there. There's about 50 adults over there. There's about 50 adults over there. Little old kids out there that ain't even got no business playing yet that high. I mean, I know all you think they're going to be a superstar and make the family rich, but it ain't going to happen. Ain't, one out of a million does that, and it ain't yours, and it ain't mine. And uh, uh, you're just wasting 90% of your time. Uh, but anyway, uh, you, you, uh, uh, there are little old boys out there like that, uh, uh, can't even hardly throw the ball, and is out there, and I sat there, and the longer I sat there, the matter I got. That bench was cold. That air, it was eight o'clock. It was eight thirty. It was nine o'clock. It was five after nine when that game got over with. I, the, I got, I got some. I want to stand up. Over there was another field joined to this one, and there's about a hundred people over there, and over there was another field, and about another field, over, and I thought this is the biggest bunch of hypocrites I've ever seen in my life. Them same people. If you took kids, church kids, if you said we're going to meet out here Tuesday night and we're going to take all the kids out giving out tracts and you kept them out till 9 o'clock on a school night, oh my goodness. It had to be 10 o'clock before any of them kids got in bed. I'm telling you, something in, I get I, I'm, I get sick and tired of listening to y'all's junk. Uh, the camp meeting light can't last past 8 20 because your kids got to get in the bed and they stay up till 10 o'clock at night for a blessed ball game. Amen. I, you know, I tell my kids you can't play but one sport anyway. One sport, that's it. If it's basketball, baseball, uh, soccer, uh, one, listen, sports have absolutely took over the world. I'm jealous for the Lord. What, a, what if we had our kids? What if we had all the little kids out here two nights a week and we kept them till 9 o'clock outside in the cold? People would say, are y'all listening to me tonight? Come on. You know I'm right. You know I'm, I'm mad. I'm jealous for the Lord's sake. 
I'm jealous for the Lord's sake. If we kept them out here two nights a week outside, you'd say, that's just not good for kids. I, the church is making too big of a demands on my child. They shouldn't demand, oh, whatever. And you're out there, go, baby, go. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it, baby. And if we take them to go do something for the Lord, you say, I don't want to go. You know why? Your heart's so far away from God. You, you, don't, you don't even know how backslid you are. I'm telling you tonight, brother, harvest time. It's harvest time, people. It's harvest time. I told my girls when they played sports in high school, or I said, listen, and of course we had our own school then, and I said, if the Lord does something in the church and we have church, the ball games are all canceled. If a church is doing something, you're going to church and not to the ball game. You know why? Because God's work comes first. We're the church of Jesus Christ. We're not just a religious outfit. We're his body on this earth. I'm telling you tonight that it's harvest time for the church. Harvest time. It's going to be over one of these days and you're going to come to me and say, Brother Danny, I wish I'd have listened. I wish I'd have listened. I wasted my time on this. I wasted my time on that. Bus workers, it's harvest time. Don't ever leave a kid. Don't ever leave a kid. Don't ever get out there on Saturday and say, well, I'm not going to visit him. They probably ain't going to come no way. And I'm not going to visit him because I don't want to drive all the way down there. It's harvest time. The time is short. It's t- short, people. It's harvest time for the church. Amen. Number two, it's harvest time for Christians. Cast your bread upon the water, the Bible said. Thou shalt find it after many days. I meet people all the time that are just wasting their life. They said one time, this guy took his kid out into a wheat field and he said, which is the healthiest wheat? And some of that wheat was standing straight up and tall like this and other was just drooped over like that. And the little boy said, that right there is the most healthy, isn't it, Daddy? He said, no, son, no. He said, that which is tall and stand tall and, and straight up like that, that's not the healthiest wheat. It's doing nothing. But that one, it's all bent over like that, has a lot of corn grain and a lot of of fruit on it, like like the the wheat grain. He said that carrying a burden. And that's the way Christians are. That's the way Christians are. You see some Christians, they just walk around, never have a care in the world, never have a burden, never have nothing. That's not the healthiest Christian. The healthiest Christian is the one that realizes this. I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, and I want to carry a burden. I I carry a burden. I'm telling you tonight, I carry a burden for y'all. I prayed for every one of you that I could think of, and I got this side memorized, and this side memorized, and that side memorized on the Sunday morning crowd. And I start right there with Miss Desi, and I start right here with Max and Sandy and Miss Miss, uh, uh, Clark and Dottie and their kids, and I go down through here, and all of my girls and Brother Jason down through there. Then I start down through here, with, with Jimmy and all them the ones that normally sit right here and all y'all. And I pray God bless every one of them. You know why? I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. There ain't nothing the devil, nobody can do about it. I'm in. I got it made. I'm going to heaven, brother. I'm already there in the sight of God. He done seen me over there. And I'm telling you tonight, I'm carrying a burden for you and your kids and try to take somebody with us. Be a witness. It's fun to be a witness. I took um, uh, Darren. Darren came to visit with me yesterday. And I took him out here. We've seen some of the craziest things. You can see some of the most unusual. You can have more fun. You know, like, for example, for example, I went up there and we went up that mountain there in Valdez and them trees was beautiful. And I had radio on, preaching, and we was talking about the Lord and those trees were beautiful and they were yellow and red and all different colors like that. And I thought, you know what? A lot of folks said, you know what I'm going to do Saturday? I'm just going to go look at leaves. And they did and there ain't nothing sinful about that. But I got to look at the leaves and enjoy it and get a blessing and about shouted on the way there. You see what I'm saying? If you'll serve the Lord, he'll let you go sightseeing while you're, you, unless you see more sights on the bus route than you care to look at. 
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating, I'm telling you, man. It's, a, it's so educational that it's ridiculous. I mean, you talk about learning. Boy, I was out to, I stopped at the flea market yesterday. I had to bus route, and I was going to pick up a few things, wound up spending everything there so cheap, wound up spending $40. And I bought this and bought that and bought a wrench, a socket wrench and some stuff. My wife put a toothbrush in the dryer and got it hung up. That's a smart thing to do right there. And uh, Anthony finally got it out, had it tore all the pieces out, parts all over the place. We couldn't wash clothes for two days. A toothbrush in the dryer. What's she doing in there brushing her teeth? She's cleaning it. Is that what she's doing for real? Oh, my goodness. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's a blonde in her right there. Brushing the dryer's teeth. Anyway... What was I saying? Oh, yeah. I was at the flea market, and there's a man running one of them things there, and I went to him, and I give him a track, and I started to walk off, and he said, Oh, is that Danny Castle's church? I said, Yes, sir, sure is. He said, You know Danny Castle? And I thought, Now's my chance. I'm just going to see what this guy says. And I couldn't. I felt guilty, and I said, I am Danny Castle. You're Danny Castle? I said, That's right. Most time people say that, I say, You are? I heard you on radio. I thought you was this big. I mean, they thought I was six foot five and uh, have a big old uh, body about that big around. I said, yep, that's me. He said, I want to tell you something. He said, back in the early 90s, he said, I was sick. He said, I listen to you on the radio every day. And man, it helped me. Man, it blessed me. And you know what, people? I, that done me so good. I went home on the road. I thought, glory to God, way back then making them radio programs. I didn't know that. Never served that man. Didn't know that man till yesterday. Yesterday, and I'm telling you, your bread, cast your bread upon the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. Bus workers, it'll come back to you one of these days. Every time you, every time you give out a track, every, it'll come back to you. It may be a while, but harvest time finally comes back. Number three, number three, the harvest for the wicked will come. The Bible said, be sure your sin will find you out. The wicked people out there, they, they're out there partying tonight. They're out there living it up. I've noticed, I've noticed a few movie stars or, or uh, whatever they are, celebrities, singers. Uh, I don't know what you call these people like Kardashians. They're not movie stars. Never been to a movie. They ain't got no talent. They can't sing. All they got is wicked looks. And uh, they, they're rich off of that. And oh, But you know what? I've seen a lot of them people, they said, oh, uh, uh, one of them girls, uh, somebody had a, uh, a meltdown or something like that and uh, wanted to get right with God and was asking about eternity. I forget which one it was. Uh, but they was all saying, uh, once, you don't, don't, don't ever doubt this. Don't ever doubt this. When some of them celebrities go home at night and they lay down, they think about dying. They think about eternity. They wonder if it's true. They wonder for something else beside what they've got. People, don't ever be ashamed. That's why we're going to Walmart tomorrow night. I want to take that sign off the back of my forerunner. One of them teenagers will hold it up like that. Said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't ever be ashamed of that. We've got the answer. We've got what they're looking for. We've got it, folks. We've got it right here in a King James 1611 Bible that's got the answer to every problem they have. But the, but the, the, the harvest of the wicked will come. The harvest of the wicked will come. Some, some of you young people, some of you young people here tonight, I hope you don't, but some of you think, I'll go out, you know, and I'll smoke a little pot, and I'll drink a little bit, and I'm just going to test the waters to see if I like this, and I'm just going to test the water. You remember me saying this, reaping day's coming. You sow it now, you'll reap it one day down the road somewhere. You cannot play with sin and come out all right. You cannot dibble-dabble around in sin and expect it not to hurt you. It's like playing with a two-headed rattlesnake uh, laced with poison that reaping day is going to come. The harvest for the wicked will come. Some people pray for, uh, sow their wild oats and come in and pray for a crop failure. But it don't work like that. The suicide rate is like 50 times higher for alcoholics and homosexuals and people involved in deep sin. I'm telling you, harvest time comes for the wicked. Number four, the harvest of death is on your trail. Death is sure. It's no respecter of persons. It ends our earthly life. 
You wind up hospital, rest home, death, or maybe just death all of a sudden. It got Abel, it got Saul, it got Samson, it got Judas, it got Paul, it got Peter, it got Herod. No respect of persons, good people, bad people, preachers, atheists, Belshazzar, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody going to die. The harvest of death is sure. And the thing about it is, nobody knows the day or the hour of their death. I, I've been, I guess, I guess it's because of my birthday. I don't know. But I've been thinking about it. I said, oh, my goodness. Y'all ever get like that? It's about over. I'm winding up. <laughs> and, I mean, maybe you, know, you don't know. You don't know. You say, well, Brother Danny, I'm living careful and I'm taking vitamins and all that, but you don't. Listen, every time I drive home on that little old road, 20 interstate, 40 mile house, somebody could come around there on the wrong side of the road and plow, plow me into eternity in a split second. We don't know. The harvest of death is on our trail. The harvest of death. I was in two funerals this week. Uh, Brother Joe's uh, mother and, uh, and then uh, uh, Miss Lynn, brother, uh, the other day. And I preached Miss, Miss uh, Chapman's funeral the other day. And I was at Lynn's brother's funeral. And I got sitting there and I was thinking, you know what? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming for all of us. It's coming wrong. If the Lord don't come in our lifetime, we, you, me, are going to die. It's not if, it's when. I said this, talking about driving a minute ago. They said, uh, songs that you sing while you're driving fast on the way home. If you're going 75 miles an hour, you sing nearer my God to thee. If you're going 85 miles an hour, you sing, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. If you're going 95, it's, Lord, I'm coming home. Because <laughs> uh, you're, you're that close. Uh, you, ever, you ever thought about when you're out here on the road and you pass them car, you're sometimes that close? We was going up the interstate today after church. And, and this exit over here, I'd give anything if they'd fix that thing. Going like going around that, going back toward, toward Morganton. Man, you come around that thing like that, and there's a fence right here, and there's a tractor and trailer right here, and there's another car over there, so he can't move, and you're going up through there, and it's getting, you're going to get a little, 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 little. What are you going to do? Somebody coming behind you, and we's going up through there, and there was a truck coming over on us, and, and, a, and a car over here, and, and, and she said, she said, ooh, she does that once in a while. Ooh means watch out. Ooh, and, and I always fuss at her that because I don't want nobody telling me about my driving, but she does pretty good. She does pretty good. She really does. Better than some of you. Uh, I, I can't stand somebody tell me how to drive, pull over, grab the steering wheel. I can't. Uh, uh, shut up. I want you to drive. I'll let you drive. Right. Amen. Amen. I had people in the back seats saying, Watch out, Brother Danny. Pull over right here. They try, I said, Shut up. No, I don't say that. That's what I want to say. Uh, but anyway, that car, man, there's a truck right here, and there's a car right here. I guess they think you're, you don't know that. I guess, I guess. There's a truck right here, you know. And, and I'm going like that, and they're getting skinnier and skinnier. Yes, you're that close to death. You're that close to dying. That close. And, buddy, there's been a time or two when I've been a lot closer than that. There's been times, I remember one time I was down in Atlanta, or somewhere down there, and I was coming around this big old road, eight lanes of traffic like that, and there's a truck just come over him. He, he was going to smash me. He did. I must have been in his blind spot. That truck was coming over like that, and I just floored it. You either got to put on your brakes or floor it and go on around them. If you put on your brakes, somebody run into you in your back. If you try to go around him, he might smash you. And I stomped it and went, shot out right through there, and the gap closed up like that right there. That's how close we are to death. Every time we drive home, the harvest of death is on our trail. Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed and the man wants to die. After this, the judgment. You got an appointment. Number five, and I'm through. The harvest of God's wrath is coming. Harvest of God's wrath is coming. The Bible, you know what the Lord told him people? He said, flee from the wrath to come. Now you and I do not have to worry about the wrath of God. The wrath of the devil, the wrath of the world, they hate us, they no telling what they might do to us. But the wrath of God will never touch his children. 
Amen. God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Flee from the wrath to come. The Bible said in Revelation 6, 17, the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Mark chapter 4 and verse 29, he said, The Lord said, Put in the sickle, uh, for the wrath, uh, the wrath is come. The day of harvest is come. Revelation 14, 15, The harvest of the earth. Flee from that wrath. Judgment is heard. The closer you get to the city, you've heard me use this illustration over and over, but it's so relevant to what I'm talking about. The closer you get to Charlotte, the more signs you see. By the time you get to almost to Charlotte, there's so many signs you can't read them all. And that's where we're at right now. There's so many signs saying this thing's winding up, you can't even read them all right now. You know them videos that I do on the signs of the times? 15, 20 years ago, about every two years, you'd do a signs of the times something and update it. Now, by the time I get it on video and show it in here, there's so much stuff doesn't happen. On that microchip, all that stuff, there's so much stuff doesn't happen, you can't even keep up with it. We're seeing so many signs now, brother, you can't even read them all. The harvest of wrath is coming. It's coming. I'm done. I don't know who this little message spoke to tonight. I just want to remind you. Eat, drink, enjoy your life, enjoy your kids, enjoy, there's nothing wrong with them playing sports, there's nothing wrong with you eating and having cookouts or going on, there's nothing wrong, simple, just remember this, harvest is coming, y'all, get your priorities straight, get first things first, God will bless you, let's stand by our head for prayer.